and welcome. It's a pleasure to welcome you to this edition of Tech 24. In the show this week, we'll talk about space exploration and the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Were we indeed visited in our system by aliens in 2017, like a Harvard professor is suggesting? And what could be the consequences of exploring space without thinking about ethical issues? We'll ask that question to our guest, Jacques Arnoux, the head of the ethics teams at the CNES here in France. And in Test 24, we tried the Predator Thronos Air, a professional-grade massage cushioned and screen-filled gaming chair that offers a unique experience. With his new book called Extraterrestrial, a professor at Harvard University is doubling down on claims an interstellar object that passed through our solar system three years ago was actually of alien origin. Avi Loeb believes that the object was created by a faraway intelligent civilization, but he finds himself at odds with other scientists, as Wasim Cornett explains. The year was 2017. In the silence of space, an unidentified object entered our solar system, passing by our Sun, Mercury, Venus, and planet Earth, before continuing its journey through outer space. Scientists called it an interstellar visitor, as it's the first known object that is not gravitationally bound to a star to have passed through our solar system. It was first detected by an observatory in Hawaii and named Oumuamua, which means scout or messenger. And according to this world-renowned astronomist, the messenger could be a sign of extraterrestrial life. After examining all the data about it, I arrived to the conclusion that it might be of artificial origin. And the experience is similar to going on the beach and seeing seashells and rocks that are natural in origin, but every now and then stumbling across a plastic bottle that tells us that there is a civilization out there. This is the only picture of Oumuamua, 24 million kilometers away from our planet. The thin object, believed by scientists to be around 800 meters long, changed trajectories during its trip, behaving like a comet. Comets can do this when ice on them melts, for instance, but no traces of water vapor were observed here. However, other astrophysicists say having unknowns doesn't mean aliens are behind it all. Yes, it's not exactly like a comet. It's not exactly like an asteroid. But why should a rock coming in from outside the solar system look like an object in our solar system? It's not necessarily surprising for it to be a little bit different. Avi Loeb takes us to his front yard for a final humbling lesson. And there are trillions of galaxies like the Milky Way in the observable volume of the universe. So altogether, there are more Earth-Sun systems in the universe than there are snowflakes in the entire world. What that means is that we should have a sense of modesty. We are most likely common. Loeb's affirmations have put him at odds with most of the scientific community. Even the scientists who discovered Oumuamua have dismissed claims of proof of alien life. But questions do remain surrounding the object that paid us a visit three years ago. Now, Avi Loeb is no stranger to controversy. The renowned Harvard astrophysicist has produced avant-garde and provocative research on black holes, gamma ray bursts, and the early universe. He's actually only courted the more sensitive topic of SETI for the last 10 years. Well, let's now turn to our tech editor, Peter O'Brien. Hello, Peter. Hi, Julia. So what's your take on this uh, whole theory? It's so strange, all of this. It kind of reminds me of Rendezvous with Rama, that Arthur C. Clarke novel, where this is right. long, strange object visits us from another star system. The strangest thing about Oumuamua for me is the fact that it seemed to accelerate as it left our solar system. Right, and that's something scientists can't actually explain yet. And the thing is that the object, of course, is, is long gone and yeah. there are many questions that won't be answered. Yeah, it's, it's left a completely blank slate. Anyone can put their opinion on it. But the good news is we've already had a second interstellar visitor and that's 2i Borisov. That, there's it there. And that, that was discovered in 2019 coming through our solar system from another solar system by an amateur um, astronomer. And 
with more sensitive equipment that we're building, like the Vera C. Rubin Observatory in Chile, we're going to see many more of these interstellar objects and hopefully be able to send a camera to look at one closer in the future. Now, entertain me for a minute. What would it actually look like, this alien interstellar ship, and mm. how would it get here? I think to answer that question, we have to look at the kind of thing that we're already sending out from Earth. So Voyager 1 and 2 have already um, gone through into interstellar space, but they were sent out in the 70s. They're still going, of course, um, on, on nuclear-powered batteries. So this is when plutonium decays. They convert that heat into electricity. Now, clearly, we need to go faster now. Yeah, we do. And I think the, the one, one of the ways to get really a lot faster for um, without having to burden a spaceship with a load of fuel could potentially be this thing, a solar sail. Now, Avi Loeb actually reckons Oumuamua might have been a solar sail. In any case, he's actually on a team which is working on sending some of these to Alpha, Alpha Centauri our nearest star system. Now, what would actually, how would it work? Right, so shift? yeah, they're, they're planning something quite extraordinary, which is to have a sort of a large ping pong ball kind of thing, like a, a, light, a light ball which is uh, orbiting around our planet. And then you'd shoot a very powerful laser at it, which would exert a lot of radiation pressure on it and accelerate it up to about a fifth of the speed of light, hoping to get to Alpha Centauri within two decades and send us back some nice photos. But of course, this is billions of dollars away. Right, thank you very much for that, Peter. Although we can't yet be certain that space is the final frontier, it is without question the next one. The exploration of space has fascinated the human imagination for millennia. But as we continue our quest, some scientists are now calling on governments and private space businesses to stop for a minute and ponder on ethical issues. This, as exploration, could have irreversible consequences. Well, let's now turn to Jacques Arnoux, doctor in the history of science and the head of the ethics teams at the CNES here in France. Hello and welcome. Hello, thank you for the invitation to join you. So first, why do humans always feel the need to search for aliens? You know, every living being, from the smallest cell to the huge whale, has a concern to identify the other living beings that approaches him. Friend of enemy or enemy, sexual partner or prey good to eat. We humans have an additional ability, our imagination. We are able to travel through our brain in other species, in other times, to meet other beings than those we usually meet, to live with them new, extraordinary, if possible friendly, sometimes conflicting relationships. We talk about alter egos, other than me, other than ourselves, who allow us to know each other better, to be happier. But it's always in imagination. So when we leave the world of the imaginary, when we return on, to Earth, we look for whether there are such beings. We are on the lookout, waiting for an other. So in my opinion, the question of the other follows our humanity, follows us as our shadow. Now, why is a multidisciplinary approach useful when it comes to space exploration? You know, space exploration didn't begin only in the 60s with a Sputnik and an Apollo mission. Three centuries before, the first modern astronomer discovered that the universe was huge, but especially that the universe has unique law. And at this time, they discovered that one time it will be possible to travel in space, to explore space. And during this time, between uh, the 17th century and the 20th century, our imagination, our science were engaged in the space exploration before the concrete exploration. That's the reason today, when scientists are exploring uh, the solar system and, and beyond the solar system, it's not only science, it's also all our culture, all our imagination, our, all our philosophy and ethics will they are engaged in this exploration. So we need to combine all our knowledge to prepare uh, ourselves to the future in space. Now, what would be the ethical concerns of meeting an extraterrestrial species, for instance? Um, first, we must not reduce ethics to a judgment 
authorization or prohibition of our actions. This validation procedure is only the last step in an ethical process. It begins by questioning the purpose of a project, by studying its possibility, by measuring its consequences. So searching for extraterrestrial life is obviously exploring the unknown. And so it's necessary to adopt attitudes that respect the environment in which we enter. You cannot imagine how engineers take care of sterilizing the probes they send to Mars. The same precautions are taken when they bring back samples from other sp outer space. There is no question of contaminating the Earth by unknown substances that would be dangerous. But the search of, for extraterrestrial life is also to ask the question of the origins of our own life. This question is not only scientific, but also philosophical. Are we ready to know where, where we are come from and therefore a little more who we are and what we are capable of? That's an ethical question. Well, thank you very much, Jacques Arnoux, for that. Thank to you. And it's time now for Test 24. On the set of Test 24 this week, we have the follow-up to the famous Predator Thronos, a scorpion-looking gaming chair that made waves a couple of years ago. Now, I think I can say this, Peter, this is your dream come true, isn't it? Well, if I could remotely fit it up the stairs or into my flat, maybe it would be. It's the Predator Thronos Air, and it's actually, believe it or not, more lightweight than the previous one. Um, it's not pneumatic like the last one, so it's manual. You do have to put it up and down yourself. I had the joy of playing a bit of Forza on it earlier, which I have to say was the most comfortable gaming experience I've ever had. You're reclining in the chair, just looking at it all, looking at what you're, uh, you're gaming on just there in front of you. Um, for 9,000 euros, you don't even get the PC or the screens. So it is pretty expensive, but you do obviously get all the beautiful RGB lighting, you can have cup holders, and the chair even comes with a massage back to it. Right, and I think you, you probably need a room just for that. Yeah. Well, thank you very much to Peter O'Brien there, our tech editor. That brings us to the end of this week's edition of Tech 24. See you soon. <laughs>